Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this Friday lesson brought to you by Tunable.org, and it is a lesson on circle geometry as requested. Um, right. Um, before I start, I'd just like to again invite you all to not only join Tunable.org, but also to enjoy to join the Grade 12 Mathematics class because if you do that then you'll be able to message me and you can tell me which sections you're struggling on and then we can address them in the lessons, especially if there's more than one of you that are struggling on that section. Right, so let's get started with the circle geometry. It's a tricky section. Um, it wasn't in the curriculum for a very long time and now it's back in the curriculum. So, well it was in Paper 3. But now it's been brought back into the normal um, because paper three has disappeared from the curriculum. So some people really struggle with it. And I think part of the reason is because the teachers may may or may not or may, may also struggle with it because they haven't taught it for a while or they haven't had an opportunity to teach it before. So I've decided to start right from the beginning with circle geometry. Um, the reason being that I'm going to be covering all the theorems that the grade 12 CAPS document says that you are going to, that are examinable. So we're going to go through those and then we're going to go through practice examples and, and so on. What I can say to you with circle geometry is two things. One, you need to learn your theorems. Okay, and two, you need to be able to apply your theorems and then it comes down to practice. Thousands and thousands and thousands of examples. Well, not really thousands, but lots and lots of examples. The more you do, the more you'll be able to do. Trust me on this. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, the theorem statement says that, and I just need to get a pen out. I don't know why I forgot to do that, but let's get a pen out. Okay, the theorem statement says a line drawn from the center of the circle to bisecting the chord is perpendicular to that chord. Okay, the theorem statement says the line drawn from the center of the circle bisecting the chord is perpendicular to the chord. So that is a theorem statement and chances are you will be given a circle with a diagram like this and they'll say prove it. Okay, so I'm going to go through the proof with you now. Why? I know that you guys can read the proof in your textbooks, but it's important that you be able to understand the proof because these proofs have to be perfect. And it's easier to get a proof right if you understand it than if you are trying to just memorize it. So what you have to say, you have to say that you are given, you are given this circle, okay, with O as the center, okay, and you are given O as the center with B is the midpoint of chord AC. So you really are just saying exactly what you've been given, right? Now, what you need to do is you need to do a construction. And when you do your constructions, you have to tell them what construction you're doing. And what we're going to do is we're going to use congruency. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a straight line here and we're going to draw a straight line here. Now again, I'm going to point out to you that I unfortunately do not have the facility of a pencil and a ruler on the software. You guys, this needs to be drawn with a ruler. It needs to be straight. And you need to draw to the pencil. Why? Because I don't want to see Tipex. Okay, if you mess it up, you need to be able to erase it. So you need an eraser as well. And draw it with a ruler. Okay, so your construction is um, going to be join OA and OC. Join OA and OC. And now we've got two triangles. We've got triangle OBA and triangle OBC. So what we're going to do is look at congruency for these two triangles, okay? So we're going to say in triangle and we're going to start, it doesn't really matter where we start. So I'm going to start A, B, O, A, B, O. What's important here is that your 
angles that you name are in the same order for both triangles, okay? So, and triangle. So, do you agree we went through this line here, AB, which is the same length as BC, and then we went through this straight appy line, okay? The line that's joining O to B. So, we need to go through the same order with this triangle. So, it's going to be C, B, O, okay? Now, do you agree that AB is equal to CB and why? Because it's been given. They told us that AB was equal to BC, right? Then they said, okay, fine, we know that OB is equal to OB. Now you can either write that OB is equal to OB and the reason is it's common in both of them or you can just write OB is common as matter. And these guys here, which a lot of people miss, these are radii of the circle. O is the center of the circle and these are radii. So that means that these two lines are obviously equal. So therefore we can say that AO is equal to CO. And why? Radii. And grade 12s, if you don't put reasons in when you're doing geometry, you might as well just, I don't know, give it up. Because I'm not being mean and rude, but there are equal amounts of marks, if not more marks given, for the reason than there is for the actual working out. So if you don't put your reasons in, then you're losing so many marks. So please put your reasons in. Okay, therefore, triangle ABO is congruent to triangle CBO and the reason is side, 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 right? Now, what were we trying to prove? We were trying to prove that this was perpendicular, this line OB was perpendicular to line OC, right? But from this, we can say that angle ABO is equal to angle CBO, right? This angle is equal to this angle because of the above congruency, right? Therefore, but they're on a straight line, but they're on a straight line. Therefore, they have to equal 90 degrees. So therefore, they are 90 degrees and therefore this line OB, and I can try to get therefore OB is perpendicular to line ABC. There you go. Or just AC. Okay, so that is that proof and you need to know it. It's one of the proofs you have to be able to do. Okay, so please make sure you can actually do this proof. Um, a good way to do it is to practice it, is to make sure that you've done it. I mean, is to study it and then draw the picture or get a copy of it and then just keep trying it by yourself. Okay, so in other words, you will do it again by yourself without this writing here. Okay, the best way to do it, and then make sure you get everything right. Okay, don't just read through it and think, okay, yeah, 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 it's obvious, because that's not how you're going to remember it, and you are not going to get all the marks, and there are lots of marks for proofs in the exams. Right, let's move on to the next one. So, this one is kind of the inverse of the previous one, okay? This one says the line drawn from the center of the circle perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord. In other words, therefore, AB is equal to BC. So what they're saying is in the previous example, they said that if we had a line joining the midpoint of AC, then this would be perpendicular. Now we're saying if this line is perpendicular, then this is the midpoint. Okay, so we again gain to use congruency to prove it. So what are we given? We are given, sorry, we are given. Always tell them what you're given, okay? You're given the circle with cent oh, sorry, center O, okay? You have OB drawn perpendicular to chord AC. That's all you've been given. So again, we're going to use congruency. So we're going to do construction. So we're going to join O and A, and again, I apologize that mine aren't beautiful straight lines. Okay, so therefore we're going to join O, A, and O, C. So we're going to say in triangle A, B, O, A, B, O. 
and triangle, remember that again, we always have to do it in the right order. So it has to be C, B, O. Okay, you can think of it as at the circumference, the 90 degree, the center of the circle. Circumference, the 90 degree, center of the circle, right. Do we agree that we've got that A, O equals O, C? Okay, we've got A, O equals C, O. Why? Because they are radii, right? We also have that this angle here is 90 degrees, which is equal to that angle. And why? Because they it's given. Okay, so we can say that angle ABO, angle ABO is equal to angle CBO, which equals 90 degrees. Why? Because they told us that these lines were perpendicular. So that's given. And then this line is common. Okay, OB is common. So we can just write OB is common. Now remember in the last example, I wrote OB equals OB, and this time I'm just writing common. So I wanted to show you that you can do it both ways. Okay, so OB is common. Therefore, do you agree that triangle ABO is congruent to triangle CBO and it'll be right angle hypotenuse side. Right angle hypotenuse side. Okay. Therefore, we can say that AB has to equal CB. Okay, because of this. Okay, and therefore we can say that OB bisects AC. There we go. So those are your two proofs, the first two proofs that you have to, have to, have to learn because there is a very strong chance that you may be asked one of them. Okay, so please learn them. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some of these proofs to some questions. Okay, and once we've done that, then we'll start learning some new proofs. Okay, so let's start with this. It says OP is 50 millimeters. And OM, OM is 30 millimeters. Okay, and it says calculate PM and PQ. Okay, so PM is easy because we know that this is right angle triangle, right? So therefore we can use Pythagoras to work out PM. We can say, well, we know that OP squared is equal to OM squared plus PM squared, okay? Why? Because it's a right angle triangle. Remember what I said to you? You always have to, this is for working out PM, eh? you always have to give reasons. So OP is 50 squared is equal to OM, which is 30 squared plus PM all squared. Therefore PM is equal to the square root of 50 squared minus the t squared. So we need our calculators. And there it is. So we're going to go the square root of, let me just clear this. We're going to go the square root of 50 squared minus the t squared squared. And then we just move over and then we got equals and that's 40. So therefore PM equals 40. So that's pretty easy, right? Now they want PQ. Well, PQ is just double PM. Why? Because we know the theorem that says that the angle, I mean the line that is a bisector of a chord from the center of the circle, I mean is perpendicular to the center of the circle is a bisector. Okay, so therefore we can say PQ equals 2 times 40, which, sorry, I have to write in the millimeters, which is 80 millimeters. And you have to give a reason. And the reason is that OM is the perpendicular bisector of PQ. By writing that, you're showing that you know that they have actually, that you know that the theorem, that if you drop a, core, a line down from the center of the circle to the chord, then, and it's perpendicular, then it bisects P and Q. 
Right, let's do another example. That was a pretty easy example. Let's do something slightly com more complicated. Yeah, we've got SP is 100 millimeters. So the whole of this is 100 millimeters, right? And OT is 40 millimeters. And what do they want? They want QP, the whole of this. Okay. So the first thing you need to realize, I'm going to change color. The first thing you need to realize is that SP is the diameter because O is the center of the circle, right? So if SP is the diameter, then OP is going to be equal to OS and they're both going to equal to half of 100, which is 50. Okay. Right, and then this is quite nice because now we've got OT and we've got OP and they want a QP. But again, because of the theorem we've just learned, we learned that if you take a line and you drop it down so it is perpendicular with a chord, then it bisects that chord. Okay, so if we work out what TP is, then we can double it and we can get QP. Right. So let's do that. So again, by Pythagoras, we're going to say 50 squared is equal to 40 squared plus TP all squared. And I'm just going to write Pythagoras here. Yeah? Pythagoras. Okay. Therefore, do you agree that TP is equal to the square root of 50 squared minus 40 squared? And I'm hoping you remember from the previous question, but if not, let's do the sum. So let's do it. It's going to be the square root of 50 squared minus 40 squared move over equals and it's 30. So TP is 30 millimeters. This distance here is 30 millimeters here. Okay. Therefore, Therefore, do you agree that QP equals 2 times TP? Why? Because we can say chord from center of circle perpendicular. Let's make that a line. Line from the center of the circle perpendicular to chord bisects chord. Okay, we're saying that the line from the center circle that is perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord. Therefore, QP is equal to 60 millimeters. There we go. So QP is 60 millimeters. Right, let's try another example. I've included quite a few examples with each different type of theorem because like I said, the more you practice, the better you become. And I'm trying to cover as many different types of examples you can get. And I know these might seem simple at the moment, but when you include them into slightly more complicated examples, then you need to be able to identify this. Okay, so first of all, they tell you that AB is 48 centimeters. So the whole of this is 48, all right? They tell you that OM is seven and ON is five, right? And they want the length of PQ. Okay, so we somehow have to relate this distance here of AB and the seven and the five to get our PQ, okay? Hmm, but we know Let's think about what we know. We know that if this whole thing is 48, then do you agree that this bit here is 24 and that's 24, okay? Because they are bisected by this line. They may not look it, it doesn't matter. The point is that they are. Okay, so we know that we've got this idea and that side here. Does that mean that we could get the radius of the circle? Yes, it does. So if we joined OB, do you agree that we could get that there? But what is that? That is the radius of the circle. If I then joined OQ, OQ is also the radius of the circle, right? And I've got five, then do you agree I could get NQ? 
And if I've got NQ, I can just double it and I'll get PQ. Right. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to say, first of all, MB is equal to 24 centimeters. Why? Because M is the perpendicular bisector of AB, right? Then you can say we're going to construct OB and OQ. Now, some of you might say, well, what is wrong with OP and OA? Nothing. Nothing was wrong with it at all. You could have done those two sides. In fact, you could have done OB and OP. It really doesn't matter as long as you're using your triangles, okay? And you are in the, using the fact that they are radii. So we've got those two. Okay, so do you agree we can get OB now? Because OB squared is equal to 7 squared plus 24 squared by Pythagoras. Right? Therefore, OB equals the square root of 7 squared plus 24 squared. So we need to get out the calculator and clear and we go square root of 7 squared plus 24 squared and we move over and we say equals and we get 25. So therefore OB is equal to 25. OB is 25. So this length here is 25. Okay, now that means, I just want to check that I did square root that. Yes, I did. Okay, so that's the correct answer. So now that means that therefore OQ equals 25. So this means that this here is also 25. So do you agree that means that I can get NQ now? Because I can use, again, Pythagoras. And you need to say the reason that OQ is 25 is because they're both radia right now let's go back up we're looking at nq and we're looking at this triangle here so we can say well in that case we know that oq squared is equal to o n squared plus n p squared again by pythagoras and i'm writing it out so that you can see what i'm doing Okay, and if you're ever worried about whether or not you should write out the extra line, always write out the extra line. It's worth it. It's always good to be able to, okay, I don't mean to be rude about teachers, and I'm not ever um, rude about teachers, but when you are answering something in an exam, you need to pretend that the person that's marking the, the exam paper is tired, which they probably are, and doesn't want to struggle to work out what you did. Okay, so if you make it easy for them to understand what you did then they're more likely to just give you marks okay but if they have to sit there and try and struggle their way through your scribbles and because some people are very untidy including me okay so the best i can do is to lay it out neatly okay so they don't want to fight through this stuff to see what you got right or wrong okay and just remember that just as much as your teacher may love you and really want you to do well they have to be fair so if they cannot read your answer then they cannot give you the marks okay so always try and lay the stuff out neatly and if you think that they may not follow your logic perfectly maybe you're doing it a little bit differently then that's fine but always show what you're doing and then give your reason okay so we've got oq squared is equal to on squared plus np squared so oq squared is 25 all squared is equal to on squared which is 5 squared plus np squared Okay, so now I'm going to write here, you wouldn't do this, you would just carry on down the page and if you run out of space, you don't write next to it, you write on the next page. I, however, do not have a next page, so I'm writing over here. So I've got 25 squared minus 5 squared is equal to NP squared. So NP is going to be the square root of this, so I need to get out my calculator again. And I'll bring it over to this side so I can see what I'm doing. So I go square root 
of 25 squared minus 5 squared and we move it over just in case and we write equals and that's 10 root 6 which is not useful at all so we're going to put it like this and it becomes 24.494 so therefore it's 24.49 okay so therefore np is equal to 24.49 right but we didn't want sorry that's supposed to be NQ. My apologies, NQ. And that's NQ, and that's NQ. But we didn't want NQ, we want QP. We want the whole of this, QP. So in order to get that, what do we need to do? We need to multiply it by 2 for the same reason as that. So then if we multiply it by 2, we're going to times this by 2, and we get... 48.989 but this is interesting because a 9 here is going to round this up to 9 so it just becomes 48.99 so that becomes 48.99 and remember your units it is centimeters centimeters and the reason that you would do this is because n is the perpendicular bisector of PQ. You need to tell them always your reasons. Okay, right. So let's try another example. Okay, guys, this is a typical exam question, whether you're in grade 11 or grade 12. And the reason I say that is because um, some people, because they're new to circle geometry, the grade 11s may have joined this, this lesson. But point is that this, it doesn't matter what grade you're in, if once you've done circle geometry, this question comes up very often. So please make sure that you know how to do it. Okay, they say MC is 12 centimeters. So from here to here is 12, right? A to B, the whole of that is 48, which means, and this is 90 degrees, right? So therefore we know that this side is equal to this side. So therefore we know that this is 24 and this is 24. And they want us to calculate OA, but they're giving us a hint. They're saying let MO equal X. Let MO equal X. Okay, and that's the clue because of the fact, and this is what you need to realize, is that everybody agrees that OA is a radius. Everybody says, okay, well, that's pretty obvious. That's a radius, right? What people seem to miss because of the way it's drawn is that that's also a radius. Therefore, the whole of OC, which is a radius, is x plus 12, right? This little bit here from there to there is 12, and this little bit here from O to M is x. Therefore, the whole of that radius is x plus 12. But OA is also a radius. So therefore, that is also equal to x plus 12, x plus 12, right? So now we've got this pretty little triangle that we can work in. We've got this triangle here because we've got the x over here, okay? We've got the 24 over here and we've got the x plus 12 over here. So we can work out what x is because this is a right angled triangle so we can use Pythagoras. So you need to tell them that you've made AM equal to 24. So you say AM equals, sorry, not 24. Yes, it is 24. Why is that 25? I'm so sorry. <laughs> AM is 24. And why is it 24? Because M is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Right. So now we've got this triangle. So we can actually say in triangle AOM, just so that your teacher knows what you're talking about. We know that OA squared, the, path, the hypotenuse, is equal to O M squared plus M A or A M squared. Okay. But O A happens to be X plus 12. 
So that's x plus 12 or squared equals om, which is x squared plus am, which is 24 or squared. So obviously we we're hoping for something like a trinomial, yes? Yeah? So let's see if we can make this look pretty. So we need to multiply this out. So that becomes x squared plus, remember how you do this? You got 12 times x times 2, so it's 24x plus 12 squared, which is 144, equals x squared. Oh, yay, that's quite nice. Plus 24 squared, I'm sorry, I do not know that in my head. So let's just do it. 24 squared equals 576. 576. Okay, so do you agree, which is very nice, is that these x squareds cancel because they're both positive. So they cancel. Yay, no trinomial. So now you've got the 24x is equal to 576 minus 144. Okay, so therefore x is equal to, if we just subtract that, that becomes 6 minus 4 is a 2, 7 minus 4 is a 3, 5 minus 4 is a 1, 432 over 24. So now I need to get my calculator out again and move it over. So I go 432 divided by 24 and I get 18. Yay, nice number. Therefore, x equals 18. Okay, am I finished? No, I am not finished this question because did they ask you to calculate x? No, they didn't. They asked you to calculate OA and OA is what? It is x plus 12. So OA equals x plus 12, which is 18 plus 12, which is 30. Ta-da! Okay, Right, let's move on to a next, next theorem. Okay, it says angle at the center concepts, and there are a whole bunch of them, okay? And this is the first one, and it's actually quite important, okay? It says angle at the center is equal to twice the angle at circumference. That's really what it's saying. The angle at the center equals twice the angle at the circumference. Okay, um, there are two ways that you can write this. So let's have a look at it. The first way says the angle which an arc or chord subtends at the center is double the angle at the, of the same arc, a uh, double the angle that the same arc subtends at any point on the circumference. Or you can say the angle at the center of the circle is twice the size of the angle at the circumference when the angles are subtended by the same chord or arc. Fine, fair enough. So what we're saying is that if this is x, do you see that this is subtended? by these two points. In other words, you know, which two points make this angle? That's what we mean by subtend. So it makes this angle B is made by points, the lines going from A to B and A to C. So we say that A and C, X is subtended by AC, right? This angle here is at the center of the circle and it is subtended as well by A and C, but it's at the center of the circle, so it happens to be twice it, twice the size, okay? The way we write this out if we're doing our, if we're using this as a reason, is just the angle at the center equals two times the angle at the circumference. There is nothing wrong with writing down the, all the proper words when you are writing down your reasons, but it can be very tedious when you're doing long, long, long geometry questions and there's not enough space. So we tend to shortcut it, okay? So let's look at our proof. So the first proof is going to be, obviously we're trying to prove that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference and you're given this diagram. This is one of the ways that they can give you the diagram. There are a couple ways, but this is the first one. Okay, the first thing you need to do is right at what you're given, but they tell you usually, but you're given a circle, center O, and then you've got points A, B, C, or you can say that you've got A, B, C is subtended, 
subtended by um, arc AC. Okay, happy with that. Now, we are required to prove, we need to prove that AOC, angle AOC equals two times angle ABC. Okay, now I just want to point something out to you. There are two different ways to write angles. The one way is to write it as an angle ABC, and the other way to write it is ABC like that. Now, I was taught to do it like that, and I've subsequently seen that a lot of, and nowadays they use this a lot, and they use it interchangeably. Um, so it totally depends on your teacher and what your teacher has been using. This funny L-shaped thing means angle, and that also, if it's got a letter in the middle with a copy on it, then that also means angle, okay? So if I write ABC like that, I'm talking about angle ABC. If I write AOC like that with an angle, that is going to be the same, but I'm going to try to use that nomenclature there. I'm going to try and write it like that because I see that most of the textbooks these days are using that. I think simply because it's easier to type, but we're going to use it, okay? Just so, so that you guys get used to it. So we're trying, going to try and prove that angle AOC is equal to twice the angle at the circumference is twice angle ABC. So the first thing you need to do is draw a construction. And again, you need to use a ruler and a pen and you need to join the dots. Okay, so you're going to join, you're going to join BO and extend it past it to any random letter. I'm going to call it M, okay? And extend to M. It could be anything, it could be P, Q, R, it doesn't matter, okay? You can also use, instead of saying extend to, you can use the word produce. Produce means that you're extending it to that letter. Okay, right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let something be X. I am going to let angle A, B, O, B, X, this one here. Okay, so my proof, here's my proof. I'm going to let angle A, B, O equal X, okay? Then do you agree that O, B and O, A are radii, right? And if that's the case, then these two angles, angle B and angle A are equal. So therefore this angle here is also X, okay? So what we can say is, therefore, angle BAO is also X, and you need to give the reasons. You need to say that OB equals OA and Y because they are radii, right? Okay, now we're going to say, well, how does that help us? Well. If you know the proof or the theorem that, which you should know, that the exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. In other words, this angle X plus that angle Y is equal to this angle here, X plus Y. And that's what I'm going to use here. There's my exterior angle over here. And that, there's my straight line that angle there is equal to the sum of these two. So therefore, angle AOM is 2X, right? So I'm going to say, therefore, angle AOM equals 2X. And I would say exterior angle equals sum of two interior opposite angles. Sure. Exterior angle equals sum of the two interior opposite angles. And again, like I said, you guys are welcome to write down all the words. We just don't bother. Okay, right. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but on this side, but what we're going to do is we don't know that those triangles are identical. In other words, I'm going to show you. We don't know that OAB is exactly the same size as 
OCB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this do be Y. It can be anything. You guys can let it be A, P, whatever. But I'm letting it be Y. So we're going to say let, okay, angle CBO, CBO equal Y, right? Therefore, angle BCO equals Y. And why? Because exactly the same reason. Because OB equals OC because they are radii. And guys, please understand the only reason I'm changing this other color is that you can see where I'm writing. This would all be under each other, okay? So therefore, this is Y, okay? Therefore, for exactly the same reason, this is the exterior angle to that triangle. Let me draw it here so you can see it. There's the straight line. There's the triangle. So this angle here is the sum of that angle plus that angle. Okay. So therefore, we can say that angle COM is equal to 2y, because it's y plus y, 2y, and it would be exterior angle equals sum of the two interior opposite angles. Sure. Okay, so do you agree then that AOC, angle AOC, the whole of this, which is what we're trying to prove, remember, is 2x plus 2y, okay? But do you agree that that can be written as equal to 2x plus y, right? But if you look carefully, you can see that angle ABC equals x plus y, right? There it is, x plus y, A, B, C. Therefore, this is equal to two times angle A, B, C. And therefore, we have proven that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Ta-da! How cool is that? Okay, so now we have another version of exactly the same proof that we have to do. And we have to do it on this page here, on this type of drawing. And what I'd like to suggest you do is... I would like to suggest you try and go and do this proof. And I'm going to give you a hint. The construction is to join OB. And then if you look carefully, you can see that there is a triangle there. Okay. AOB is a triangle. Okay. And where else is a triangle? Think about it. Okay. What else is a triangle? So you've got OBC is a triangle and AO. B is a triangle. So I'm going to leave it now because we've run out of time, but we're going to continue with this proof in the next lesson on Monday, and then we're going to do a whole bunch of examples based on these proofs, and then just keep moving through our circle geometry. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend, grade 12s.